Hi, everybody. We're so excited. I'm happy to introduce you to Dara. She, I met her at a business conference. She was telling us what her dream was. She was on the opposite side of the room. And when she said she was doing quilting, I was like, I need to meet this woman. So at the break, I went over there and she wasn't over there. And I was just asking people in the general vicinity, who is the quilter over here? And I left her my business card and she got with me. And now we're just fast friends. So welcome, yeah. Dara. I'm happy to have you here. And tell us what you want. Uh, tell us about what you're presenting for yeah. us today. We're planning an event and Dara's coming. So I just wanted to let you know yeah. about it. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. So I'm Dara Thomason. I live on Vancouver Island. I'm a Canadian and I was a professional quilter for many years. And when I, and I was able to quilt for people, I was able to teach quilting. I used to be a school teacher. I have um, lots of experience with teaching and I had so much fun teaching women how to quilt. And one of my favorite things to teach them was free motion quilting. And I have this amazing these classes that I developed because I love curriculum and I love building on people's skills. And I had a lot of ladies that would come to my classes and I would refine it and um, the process. And so I was able to write uh, two books, actually. Um, my first book came from all of that experience that I had with teaching these women the fun fundamentals. And so I, I call myself the free motion quilting liberator because just like when you learned how to write, like cursive writing, you you learned the basics and then it became your own. So this book is um, a book on that. And then the other book that I wrote was the Doodle School book. And so this one is Every Day You Get a Prompt. And this is on my YouTube channel. The, the 31 Days is free on my YouTube. If you want to buy the book, it gives you a lot more detail. And then it comes with a, you can buy the notebook that works with it. It can fit in your purse. Uh, so those were, these are the ways that I help women find their free motion quilting voices. Um, so we're going to, today we're going to be talking about the top three myths of what's keeping you from loving quilting your own quilts. <laughs> yes. um, I know it's so good. So I also, um, my, my business kind of evolved. And so right now, most of what I do is I help women liberate themselves from mental and physical weight. Um, and that's what I spend most of my time on, but there's a lot of the similar principles. And I wanted, so one of the things that um, really empowers me is being able to give a quilt the way that you see it. So like even behind you, Emily, this like beautiful quilt, it's super fun, it's bright, it's colorful. But what happens when you spend all that time and effort making a quilt and then you can't quilt it yourself, it kind of feels like it wasn't totally you didn't, you didn't get to finish everything on it. Yeah, there's a sense of accomplishment when it's all, you did it all yourself. And I like your book and I have done some classes with you where we have doodled and you talk about the muscle memory. And that's so great to have that and to develop that, just like you said, with your handwriting and you get your own style. Yeah, but you have to start somewhere. Like you really do need to have those fundamental skills. And one of the things that I saw with the ladies that I was teaching this class over and over was they thought that they should be able just to do stippling and it shouldn't be a big deal. Well, stippling is actually very complicated. There are a lot of elements, design elements that go into making a good stipple that is not intuitive. It's not, um, it's almost like you're eating a, a steak before you're eating, like if you're just getting, you know, you're a baby, like it's like you're giving babies a steak. They can't eat that yet. They don't have, that ability. And so being able to, to slow it all down and to really look at the design elements and build on them one by one and build your muscle. I don't even teach stippling till the, I think it's the seventh design in my, in my 10 step process. So, yeah. So just, and just a willingness to take those baby steps to develop your skills so that you can get there because a lot of people are afraid to even start. And it's the, it's like the baby learning to walk. You have to go through that wobbly stage to get to the, the better stage. And if you're not willing to be wobbly for a little bit, you'll never get there. It's the willingness to just try. 
Yeah. And so, um, one of, so the, the reason we're having this discussion on your YouTube is that I think there's a lot of myths out there that keep people from even trying. Yeah. And so, um, so I, this is a really good discussion and I want to just highlight, um, in the comments below, you'll see a little link and I have the worksheets. Well, I'm a, as a former school teacher, I love a worksheet. So I have a little handout for you with all of this on here. Plus I have the eight troubleshooting uh, steps at the end that we'll go over. So if you're watching this and you're feeling frantic, you want to try to write everything down, don't, don't stress out about it. I mean, you can always watch it over and over, but if you just click on that link, it'll get you the PDF and the, you'll be able to have it all. You can just print that off. No problem. Yeah. Dara's got you covered, so don't I stress. Do. We I don't want you. any stress here. This is fun, laid back. We're just learning and growing. So enjoy yeah. what Dara has to give us here. Yeah, and one of the things that um, I always say is when emotions are high, intelligence is low. So I remember one time I was teaching a class and this lady was so stressed out. She was there. There was probably 10 other ladies in the class and she was trying to get her machine set up and she was just, so she finally got that set up. And then we were, we were starting to doodle the design because we always do it on the paper first. And she was so frantic. And so, uh, and I just said, you know what, all we're going to do, I actually put her sewing machine away. I was like, you're not allowed to do any of this. You're just going to listen to me. You're just going to draw. We're not going to get out fabric. We're not going to get out, a, you know, our quilt sandwich. We're not going to do that because she was so stressed out and there's no way you can learn when you're at that level of stress no so um it's not a race it's not a competition it's just a one way of finishing quilts in a way that you want to finish them so that's all we're doing here with your personality and design so yeah, exactly your own personal flair yeah totally totally um so but just like, yeah, I love that analogy about the baby walking because every time they fall down, they actually build their muscle. Yeah. And so the more they fall, the stronger they become. And the same thing with us, the more that we try, the more that we do things, then the better we're going to get at it. So the first one that I see, and Emily, you have a, you had a really good insight on this one, is a lot of people stress out about uh, if I learn on a long arm, then I won't be able to do a domestic. Or if I learn the domestic, I won't be able to go on the long arm. And you start, um, or you, you'll you see other people's YouTubes where they'll have a marker and they'll, you'll be practicing like this. Like there's, there's, you think that you're going to learn it wrong. There's no so, way to learn. There's not a wrong way to learn something. You're just learning. So, yeah. But what I, how I emphasize this one is that you are actually building a, 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 the muscle memory. So just like if you were drawing on a chalkboard or you were drawing on a, you know, on a, a big paper or you're drawing on a computer, like a, like a screen or whatever that is, you're still writing or drawing. But it does take a little minute. Like if you are going from writing on lined paper and then you're writing big on, on a paper like this or on a chalkboard, you know, some people, when they walk, draw on, right on a chalkboard, they kind of go slanted. Yeah. But they're still writing. It just takes a little bit of an adjustment. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just a little tweaking that has to yeah. take place. So, so like I, I think, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Like I was telling Dara that last year we had an event where we quilted charity quilts at Handy Quilter. They generously let us come in and we had 20 tops and I had played on a long arm once or twice. My friend has them and and I thought, like Dara said in her myth, that it would be it's just too hard to switch because I had been doing all my domestic for 10, 20 years. I, and I, I was pretty good at that. But by the end of the day of doing it on the long arm, I, it was totally fine. And within a month, I bought myself a long arm. <laughs> yeah. So. so it really is a skill that you're, what we're focusing on is the muscle memory. 
And the other part of this that's really, really exciting for a lot of my students and those who learn from my book is that you can just take paper like this and the more that you doodle, the more that you draw, the better you're going to get when you go to either a domestic or a long arm. You truly will improve exponentially by drawing even. That's why doodle school is such an incredible concept. It's like you just, you just create that muscle memory. So that's one thing I really want to, um, to help you with. The other part of that myth is I, uh, a lot of times people think that they want to just hire someone, but feel like it's cheating and it's so expensive and they don't know what machine to buy. Well, when we talk about this muscle memory, when the more that you can develop it, the more empowerment you can have. And by the way, it's not cheating by hiring someone to pull to quilt for you. No, it's like, if you make that decision, you can, but I'm just saying, if you want to have, you want to make it your own, then that's when you just learn the muscle memory. Yeah. But we're all here to help each other, whether you have somebody quilt your quilt for you, or you have Dara help you gain the skills to quilt your own. We're all here to help each other. So don't feel guilty because you needed help because there's another time when you will help someone else. So right. we didn't come to this, didn't come here to earth to be alone. We didn't come by ourselves. We have a great yeah. community and we can rely on each other to, to help build. That's why I love quilters. They're so generous and so willing to, they share fabric, they share tips. It's a great place to learn and grow and it's a, such a nurturing environment. So, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I ask women, I say, just if you have a car, does that mean you have to be able to fix the car? Yeah. No, you don't have to. Like you can just you hire this. someone to, to change your brakes or, right? So it's like, you can, you can either choose to do it yourself. Like some people do. I love YouTube. You can learn how to do that. Or you can just decide I'm going to just hire someone to do that. So just, you can allow you give yourself permission for either way. Um, okay. The second myth is a lot of people feel like there are just so many designs out there and they feel really overwhelmed. And then part of that is you feel like you're not an artist and you can barely draw a straight line. Another part of that is I watch tutorials of, you, you might watch people um, free motion quilting and it doesn't make sense how do you know where to go. So yeah. if you are overwhelmed, you it leads to inaction. It means you're just going to watch more YouTube tutorials and complain to your friends and stress out about not being able to do it versus going out there and building your foundation start doodling, start giving yourself permission to explore and play around. And just be a little wobbly at first. Um, this event that we're planning, we will be doing charity quilts. And the great thing that I love about charity quilts is that you're giving them to non-quilters. They okay. don't notice that maybe your points don't match up. They don't notice that maybe your stitches aren't all even and maybe, but they really appreciate the love, the care that went into, they just think you just gave a huge part of yourself because they think that quilt is so amazing. So I find charity quilts are a great way to just build your skills with, because you're going to put in your best effort. And even if your best effort isn't perfect, there are no quilt police when you're giving a charity quilt. They're just grateful for the love and comfort that they're receiving from you through that quilt. Well, and even when I started um, quilting for hire, I remember when I started quilting, I knew how to do loops. I knew how to do wood grain. And that was about it. Like that I felt like was kind of at that level. Like I could do other things, but they didn't look that great. Like, yeah. so, but it was interesting because I would charge clients the beginning of my business, the same in a year in. And those people who brought me the, the, the first people who brought me quilts, they were thrilled with the loops and the wood grain. They thought it was wonderful. Yes. Right. Like they, and, and then the a year later. They had. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we also, um, one of my uh, pieces of advice is when you learn how to free motion quilt, 
you learn one design and do get it dialed down really, really well. Like you just, it's like amazing. It's good. You can do it without even thinking anymore. Kind of like when you learn to drive and you can do all, you can listen to music and drive, you know, like you can start building your skills. Um, and then you get another design really dialed in and then you bring those two designs together and they have, you have a baby, right? Like you can, you feel so much more comfortable in, in translating that. So, um, the, in that, this part of people feeling like you're not an artist, I never considered myself an artist, but what had changed for me with free motion quilting was when I learned the fundamental elements of the designs then I understood what was happening like with a loop, like how you come into a loop, how do you complete it? And then I started making variations. So I would do double loops. I started doing loops in a line. I started just playing around. And so I knew the loops. I knew yeah. what was entailed. So then I could move forward to new designs and add it. It's kind of like when you play the piano. I don't know. Do you play the piano? Uh, a little bit. I plink. But... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm actually a terrible piano player because I did not want to learn scales. I thought they were terrible. <laughs> um, so I limited myself to B flat and sometimes um, F sharp. Like I can kind of play and sometimes I can play whatever. I don't know. The one has three sharps. There's like, anyways, I, I can kind of do some of those ones, but other than that, and then if they have no sharps or flat, I'm good. Yeah, but it's like I didn't learn those fundamentals for the scale. So when I play the piano, it's not as comfortable for me. Yeah, and you can't elaborate. Like my my un or my husband's uncle, he was a jazz pianist. He actually played for Nat King Cole. He played for um yeah, he's been in the Playboy Mansion. He played for Judy Garland. He had the coolest stories. But we would just go and see him when he had retired. And he would say, oh, just give me some numbers. And he would compose a song around numbers that you gave him, like your phone number or whatever. It was so amazing. But he had those skills. He had the fundamentals and he could just build on them. So like you're saying, if you just like learn the loops, learn the ease, learn the um, different motifs then you can combine them and build them and it just expands but you have to put in the effort to learn the fundamentals to get to that phenomenal stage if yeah, that's somewhere yeah. so now different. i can do like graffiti quilting i can do feathers like crazy i can do all sorts of things because i understand the elements that are involved and so it it makes sense in my own brain so even though i still don't consider myself an artist in that traditional way, I definitely feel like now I can say I'm a quilt artist because I've learned those things. So, but you have to give yourself a chance to fail and to look terrible. Yeah, you have to be weak in order to be strong. Be willing to admit, yeah, yeah I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to try. Right, right. So um, the third myth, and this one is, um, I kind of broke it down into technique and uh, technology. So I feel like one of the biggest things that holds people back from quilting is that it does feel like a whole different language as far as how do I solve my tension problems? How do I know what thread, what needle goes with which one? What thread am I even supposed to use? Am I supposed to use cotton? Am I supposed to use polyester? Like what, what, what's this weight the you know, 50 weight with three, like 350, 240, like it does feel very, it can feel very overwhelming. Yeah. And then we have needle sizes and there's like sharp needles or like all the different kinds of needles too. There's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. So the problem is if you don't give yourself the opportunity to learn, and if you don't even uh, look at it, then you're going to be in trouble. And one of the things that I did um, in this book, so this is my beginner book, and this will be available at our event. Um, we're only charging $5 for the event, which is going to be incredible um, because we I want you just to come and we're going to limit it to 40 people. So first come, first serve. Uh, Emily's going to make soup and then we're going to have you bring... 
um, uh, dessert or a salad to share. But one of the things that I've done in this book, and the reason I named it Walk, Jog, Run, is it's a, it's a play on the walking foot of your long arm. I mean, sorry, your domestic. But when you, if you wanted to run a marathon, you wouldn't, if you even just wanted to run 2K, you have to walk for a little bit, then you can increase a little bit and then maybe jog. And you just, um, the, you just have to do that in segments and then you will just improve your stamina. And um, in this book, I have little workouts for you. So every design, so this one is our E's and L's. <clears throat> so I teach you okay, how it works is I, so I, here's the design and then I teach you the techniques and I give you instructions on how to make the E's and L's. And then I give you five variations of each design. So even though there's the 10 fundamental designs, there's actually 50 designs in this book on top of those 10. So there's 60 designs in here. So here's a different techniques that you can do with the E's and L's and it just looks so cool. And then I give you workouts. So this one will say, draw E's on a lined piece of paper, continue drawing E's without lifting the pencil for five minutes. So you like put your timer on for two minutes, five minutes, three minutes, do this little thing because I, and even the beginning where I, uh, where is this one? I have you do um, your work, your workbook, I'm sorry, your work space. So I'll have you do things like get all of your thread in your studio and then um, divide it up into different weights and then get all your needles and then divide those up. I can't, I can't see where it is, but I have, oh, here we go. Sort thread by size, sort thread by ply, make a quilt sandwich um, with 100% cotton fabric, preferably in a solid color, baste it with pins. Like I'm just doing little tiny things. Um, have, have a look through your thread stash. How old is the thread? If it's older than 10 years, don't use it for free motion quilting, right? <laughs> so I break it down little tiny steps for you that it doesn't feel so overwhelming because otherwise you're just never going to do it. And it's going to feel like one of those things on your to-do list that never get done. And then you feel it's discouraged and you break trust yeah. with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels too so, heavy. It's easier just yeah. to. Play. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the other thing that I hear people say is they say, well, my hands feel awkward. Yeah. They're going to feel awkward. And that's okay. You're going to start learning. Another one people say is I just want to trace something because I feel so lost. Um, one of the problems with that is then you become a good student and you don't actually ever feel empowered and you don't ever let yourself make mistakes because a good student has to please the teacher, has to make everything right. And that just doesn't feel exciting it doesn't feel curious it feels like scary and hard yeah and and your brain doesn't learn how to do it for itself because it's right still set on getting the right answer rather than expanding and thinking oh I could do this with this and I could do this with this and just letting that like the five-year-old with the box of crayons and we don't have to worry if the sky's not blue or the grass isn't green. We can just play and experiment. And that's where the great stuff comes from is just letting ourselves expand and play. I just recently taught a, an improv class with my Enchanted Forest. And sometimes it's very hard for people to start doing that. And I'm like, take yourself back to kindergarten. There's not a wrong way to do this. Just kind of cut and sew. It's all good. And by the end, they were like so excited and like, look what I did. And it's just to let, let yourself have that freedom to just try and not worry that it's not going to be perfect because it's just going to grow and progress. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so empowering. Um, so here, here are eight uh, just tips that I thought I would share. You don't have to quilt all of your own quilts. Okay, so if it's a queen size or a king size, you don't have to do it on a domestic if you don't want to. Like you, I actually, I would recommend not doing that because it's gonna, it's gonna be really stressful, um, and 
It's going to be like a marathon and you're going to hit yeah. the wall and it's just going to sit there and you'll never finish it. A hundred percent. Yeah. So permission granted. You don't have to have every single quilt custom quilted either. Like it doesn't all have to be fancy. Like quilting a quilt with loops is like one day my husband, I had three kids and I was pregnant with my fourth and my, we were like moving and all, it was like just so much going on. And my husband said, you know, that you could feed the kids cereal for breakfast, right? I mean, you could feed the kids cereal for dinner. And I was like, no, no, that's not allowed. He's like, yeah, you totally are allowed. Like I thought I had to make, you know, a full meal every single dinner. And he's like, nope, they can have cereal. And it was just like, oh, so a quilt could just be loops. It's to be totally fine. Yeah. Um, another one is you can practice on paper to learn your skill. And I didn't bring it out, but I have, I buy, you know, the paper you, when you move and you get that paper from U-Haul that you wrap like pay, um, your plates and your cups and things in. I get that out. I have it by the box load and I fold it in half and then I fold it in thirds and then I get a clipboard. And so if I'm watching a movie, <clears throat> if I'm doing something kind of like chilling out at night, I'll just doodle. And I have some really fun notebooks that I've saved. And it's fun to watch the progression that I've made over the time. And so I would recommend you do that as well. Oh, here, I'll, actually, it's fun. They're right here. But um, these are really cool. I've seen them before. I need yeah. to do more of this. It's just such a fun way to like, keep track of where you your progression is yeah it's like um, a journal so yeah yeah but even like planning my different designs and then having that record okay my same technique or skill honed in yet but it takes time to practice that so just give yourself permission and this was like an, a, a design idea I had but I would oh here's my Here's when I started doing feathers. <laughs> it really <laughs> progressed. Isn't it fun to um, see how you've progressed? Yeah. And I'm so proud of myself for doing this. And one thing I do recommend is putting, telling, uh, when did you write it? When did you draw it? Um, here's another one. Uh, but what pen did you use? What, when was the date? Yeah, and you so recommend you can, pens different you recommend a certain yeah. pen. I actually don't recommend that you doodle with ballpoint pens they are they really make you more um stressed and anxious uh so I do recommend especially at the beginning just using um markers just like those fat tip markers that is going to be it, it glides so much easier it's so helpful there's some pencil. Pencil also is, is not too bad, but if it's a really sharp pencil, it's not that great for you. So, and then I do recommend that you play around with different um, tips of markers. And um, I don't recommend gel tip pens. Those also really, they have a really fine tip and it, you tend to, especially when you're stressed out, you push harder on it. Um, so it creates a lot of, uh, of that. So I also really like Sharpie, the fine tip Sharpie markers. I feel like that's, a, a, that's a kind of a sweet spot for me. And you can do a lot with those. And maybe um, when you start feeling yourself tense up and your shoulders start going in your ear, you just take a deep breath, like take three or four of them and that will help. Yeah. And you'll also feel better by the time you won't hurt after you've done it for yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, let yourself um, just kind of stretch. Uh, that's a big one. Uh, tension is a common problem for even professional quilters. So even I've, I've been a professional quilter. I have, uh, at one point I had two long arms and we still, timing will still go out. There still will be problems. It's nothing to do with you not being a good quilter. It's just, just like a car needs maintenance. Our long arms will have you know, we'll hit the ruler the wrong way or it starts wearing out. So you have to get new parts. Like it's, it's okay to have tension problems. It doesn't mean anything about you. Um, we can just learn how to fix them. Yeah. Uh, get, oh, so then I had already shared this one, get really good at one design and then get really good at another design and then combine them. 
Number six, uh, free motion quilting is an active process that requires you to think about what you are doing. Just like driving a car, the more you do it, the more automatic it becomes for you. So the more you build that skill, the better you're going to get and you won't even think about it anymore. So doing the feathers, once you start really getting that in, you can do feathers and you can be so much more at point with them, more refined, the more you do it and it becomes more automatic, but it's developing that really strong muscle memory. Um, number seven, when you tell yourself it's hard, it's going to be hard. Yep. If you say, I'm just in the process of learning, this is pretty fun for me to figure this out then it's going to be pretty fun to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of mindset, which you do a lot of Dara. You're really good at. Yeah. It's my, it's my, uh, my big focus. And then the last one I have for you is little steps over a long time will add up. Making a commitment to practicing and learning will make a huge difference. So um, question, one of the things that I like to ask uh, ladies is uh, if you were to talk to yourself when you were 90 would looking back on your life would you be like what would you be so proud of and what would be some of your regrets because yeah. we have a lot of wisdom as a 90 year old right yes my grandma lived to be 98 and I just love spending time with her I learned so much from her and in fact like on um on Sunday, I was talking with my sister and she just got put in Relief Society. That's a group of women in our church. And she says, I'm feeling old. And I said, no, I like Relief Society because I don't feel old because they're all older than me and wiser than me. And I feel like I have so many mothers to take care of me. And I feel like in the quilting, when I first got into quilting and joined a guild, everyone just like put their arm around me and helped me. And I was able to grow and learn because there were people willing to share with me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that so much. And so when we think about the kind of legacy we want to le leave for ourselves, the kind of impact we want to have on the earth, um, it's like, is free motion quilting a part of that? Is being able to and even just being able to finish all the projects that you started with the, even with, even if it was just a walking foot, is that something that you want to do? Or do you want to be the person that has the quilt that goes to a, a like a support, a long armor? Like you really, there really is no judgment here. It's, it is like, here's an option that you could finish your own quilts. You could do it yourself. And there is uh, an ability to learn how to do it on your own and if that's something you want to do great if not it's also not a big deal either right like it, it really isn't it's just kind of for fun and yeah and I think your 90 year old self would tell you that like yeah. enjoy life you're growing you're learning you're progressing and we're going to be okay because look here I am and look what I've accomplished so yeah. go and do yeah. not it's not the beating, it's the kindness and the support that we give ourselves that enables us to grow. I don't think you can hate yourself better. You just have right. to be loving and kind to yourself and forgiving when we fall short, but just know that we're learning and growing and next time it will be better. Yeah. There's a quilt on my daughter's, well, it's not on her bed anymore because she's moved out, but um, it, it was the first quilt I quilted on my domestic machine it was uh not quite a queen but almost a queen size and I used serger thread it was the wrong thread to use I used the wrong needle it I, I mean it kind of worked but kind of didn't the designs look terrible it's choppy it doesn't really flow and I love the quilt top it was it was such a fun quilt top to make but the quilting on it is not that great. And I, there was so many times over the last 12 years or so that I wanted to unpick that whole quilt and redo it. And I was very tempted many times. And I thought, no, I need to honor where I was and when mm -hmm. I had it. And I was so proud of myself for trying and for just even having the courage to do that. So 
And now I have these other quilts that are just masterpieces. Like they really are. I'm so proud of myself. And I think, good job. Like way to, way to, way to stick with something. And it's, it's not to say that everyone needs to do that either, but it no. was something that I happen to enjoy doing. And I felt really good about, and it's kind of a fun thing for me. It's a fun outlet. And now I can, it's, it's like, I I'm almost like invincible. Like I can, I can quilt any quilt. I can do anything. I can give it to anybody. And it's just one of my, it's a superpower that I have that is just fun that I have it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and I think people who see your quilts, they can see that no matter where you were in your journey, if they are not, they'll be amazed at what you have accomplished. Well, it's just fun. I, my dad yeah. kind of teases me. Um, he, he has uh, dementia now. And so he's starting to lose all his, you know, certain elements of his cognition. And, and he thinks it's so fun that he's like, Dara, you always talk about having fun. I'm like, it's true, dad, because if you're not having fun, what's the point? And mm -hmm. I'm not saying we can't do hard things. Like I have five children and I have all, like we have all the different struggles in life as most people do. Um, but overall, my, my goal is to have fun and to, to make the most. And so the idea of getting together at Handy Quilter headquarters and hanging out with Emily and 40 other quilters and be being able to, yeah, be able to do 20 hug quilts. And by the way, Emily, um, and those who are coming bring the binding, cause I will show you how to put binding on with a long arm. It's amazing. It saves a lot of time. And so we can even put the bindings on while we're there. And I'll teach you how to use the long arm to do that. And that is just going to improve your superpower as a human and your ability to have more fun because you can not only make the quilt, but you can finish the quilt and you can get those quilts into the arms of those who really need it. Really need it. Yes. And I also feel like when you put it, so like the, the hardest hike brings the greatest view and I feel like joy is like that. Like when you go through the struggle, when you get to the end, you're like, whoa, I did that. And it mm -hmm. feels so good. And like pleasure, pleasure is easy. You just go out and buy the your cookie or you buy that new dress or that's easy to obtain, but it doesn't last. But joy, when you put in that effort and you look at what you have accomplished, that lasts and it's wonderful to have that. So being willing to put in the time and the struggle to climb the mountain of free motion quilting, which isn't that big of a mountain, you can do it yeah. and you'll learn and grow. You will feel so amazed and happy with yourself that you did it. So I'm cheering you on. Yeah, yeah well, thank you. And I, I think about my, um, I have a son, my oldest son, he was taking the bus and the bus driver dropped him off at the wrong place. And it was, he was like, we used to tease him for being the worst at like directions. It took his, he took his mom, his, he got a drive home with one of his moms, one of his friend's moms. It took him 45 minutes to tell her how to get home where it's a, it's like a four minute drive. Oh no. <laughs> it was hilarious. And so, um, anyway, so he's lost. He doesn't know how to get home and he's like praying and he's crying and he, and he eventually got home. And I was like, at that point I had like all the kids and there's there, there, I was getting them all in the van because I needed to go find him. There's snow suits and everything. And he walked home and he figured it out. And he was like, mom, I can do hard things. Yeah. And that, that's what builds our test. That builds our self-esteem that builds our um, confidence in ourselves. Yeah. And sure. I just got a text message from my son, my other son, I have four sons and he, we have had our trampoline in like pieces because I had to order new parts and everything. And he find he's like, mom, we got to figure this out. We want to jump with the trampoline. They have spring break right now. So mm -hmm. he's been watching YouTube tutorials and everything. And he just wrote the company and asked them for a specific help for the specific problems he was having. Mm -hmm. And they wrote back and he just sent me a picture and they had the trampoline all set up. Woo! 
Yes, I bet he's so excited. It was worth the yeah. That's right. I'm like, oh, this is perfect timing for our, our uh, what we're trying to help you all. I encourage you all to do. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. So are there any other comments that you have, Emily, that are observations? No, I just want to encourage you to try. I hope that you will come. It is my birthday weekend. So come and celebrate with me. Help me to create, we'll have a huge party. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I make things fun. So yes, you're going to learn. Um, you're going to, we're going to be learning the 10 basic skills. We're going to be, we're going to, the day will be uh, learning the fundamentals uh, as far as I'm going to explain a little bit more about tension, troubleshooting, those kinds of things. And then um, we're going to go through like thread and needles, like all those basics. And then we're going to draw. We're going to learn the muscle memory. We're going to draw all that and learn, and we're going to quilt that out. And then we're going to come back and draw and then quilt that out and draw and quilt and bring that. Uh, so the we have this event where we can learn and grow. Plus, thank you. All right. And you can just all register in the, the link below. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you, Dara.